There are lots of strange rumors about ancient Malta, some with more substance than others. In this video, I'm going to discuss some of the more interesting ones, the ones that have created debate. The islands were first inhabited around 6000 BCE by early Neolithic farmers. There's no dating evidence for anything before that. But some researchers claim that people first settled in Malta during the Ice Age. Now, there are a number of reasons for this. Much attention has been given to cart ruts that go into the sea and lead off the edge of cliffs. For those of you who don't know, cart ruts are ancient parallel grooves cut into the bedrock that look as though they were either worn by some form of transport or purposefully carved to carry something. There are hundreds all over the islands. Although they haven't been dated, they are thought to be prehistoric and possibly contemporary with either the Temple period or the later Bronze Age. The argument for an Ice Age date comes from the fact that the islands were a lot bigger during the last glacial maximum. It goes when Malta were one large island and a land bridge joined the southeast with Sicily. So this would imply a settlement date going back roughly 15,000 years rather than 8,000. However, experts are certain that more recent seismic activity caused topographical changes that now mean some cart ruts go into the sea and some go off cliffs. Another famous dating controversy relates to the supposed Neanderthal tooth found in the Ardalum cave. The cave is a fantastic site the bones of Ice Aged animals have been excavated from it, and the earliest pottery which gave the name to the Ardalum phase of prehistory was also found there, alongside flint and obsidian tools. In the early 20th century, two Torodont molar teeth were excavated from the cave, and since Torodontism was thought to be only found in Neanderthals, this, uh, this discovery had the potential to push the date of human settlement back from 8,000 years to 100,000 or more. However, subsequent investigations on the teeth dated them to the Neolithic, and it was found that torodontism is also present in some modern humans. That said, there is still controversy around this particular subject. There are also rumours of cave paintings, which look like Paleolithic rock art found in other regions. Various paintings were supposedly discovered in the cave known as Ar Hassan, although these have long since disappeared. It's also said a painting of a bull was seen in the house of Lenny Hypogeum, but was scrubbed off. Um, Lenny Redick put forward the idea in her book Sirius, the Star of the Maltese Temples, that these megalithic monuments must date to a much earlier period based on their stellar alignments and procession of the equinoxes. It's a tantalizing theory, considering the fact that the orientations of the temples are quite baffling. It is possible that Malta was inhabited during the last Ice Age and that conclusive dating evidence simply hasn't been found. But the most likely origin for such a population would be Sicily, due to the land bridge present at that time. But Sicily doesn't have any dating evidence earlier than the Neolithic either. Up to now, the closest places where Paleolithic artefacts and bones have been found are Sardinia and mainland Italy. The House Safliani Hypogeum is an underground Neolithic complex dating back 5,000 years, with ornate carvings similar to the Maltese temples, red ochre spirals on the walls, and an interesting niche referred to as the Holy of Holies. The hypergeum is on three levels and many finds were excavated from it, including the famous sleeping lady, animal figurines and pottery. It is referred to as a necropolis because of the disarticulated skeletons found there. Although few bones survived being handled during the initial excavations because of the soil and climate, due to a large volume of them having been found in a small space, it was estimated that originally there could have been thousands throughout the upper two levels of the complex, which had then disintegrated over the years. It's not known why the bones were in disarray, but it's thought that it might be because earlier burials were discarded to other parts of the necropolis to make way for new ones. In their book, Malta Echoes of Plato's Island, um, Anton Mifsud, Simon Mifsud, Chris Aju Sultana, and Charles Savannah Ventura put forward the theory that the bones were deposited there in a flood. 
and were not initial deposits or individual burials, but kind of flooded in from rock-cut tombs in the area. They argue that the red soil found um, there and at the Santa Lucia hypogym, about a kilometre to the south, were deposited in the same flood event. I find this a, a really interesting possibility. In general, the experts think that the hypogym had a dual role in the course of its history. In any case, they think it may have been used for both burials and rituals similar to whatever was taking place in the above ground temples. What's quite strange is that the lowest level of, a, of the hypogym didn't have any bones at all. In the early 20th century excavations by archaeologist Temi Zamet, he reported that 11 dolichocephalic or long-headed skulls had been found there. Over the years, there were rumours they had been disappeared to cover up their alien origin. There was also talk of their shape having been caused by head binding, similar to the practices in ancient Peru. However, a recent exhibition of the schools at the National Museum of Archaeology in Valletta explains that 10 of them are no longer considered long-headed by modern scientific measurements. And the one that is classified in this way belonged to a person suffering from a medical co condition called craniosynostosis, so not an alien. A researcher called Zeitlmer became convinced that a megalithic temple lies under the water a few kilometers north of St. Julian's. It's even been given a name, Jebel Golbaha. Local divers photograph the site, which consists of large boulders, but archaeologists don't think it's a megalithic monument. The credibility of the research wasn't helped by various psychic and alien references, not to mention some confusing chronology in understanding sea level changes in the Mediterranean. But a full investigation would be required to know for certain if a temple sits under the water just off the coast or not. A few years ago, a monolith was identified in the channel between Sicily and Malta when scientists were mapping the seafloor. It has been photographed and it is thought to be around 12 metres in length and to weigh 15 tonnes. It's broken into two and has three holes carved in it, which don't look natural. Archaeologists seem pretty convinced by this one, although further investigations are needed. The strange thing is that this part of the channel was last above water about 10,000 years ago. So that would make it the earliest example of human habitation in this area of the Mediterranean. But then the question is, where are the bones, pottery and tools from that earlier period? The mystery continues. Thanks for visiting. Please like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram for more content and check out my website if you want GPS locations of the sites.